a sprawling mosaic of flooded grasslands, savannas, and forests, the Brazilian Pantanal is the largest tropical wetland in the world. Covering an area of about 140,000 square kilometers, or 54,000 miles, this unique ecosystem supports an unparalleled variety of animal life. But only one animal embodies the raw strength and untamed beauty of Brazil's wild places, the jaguar. Watching a jaguar walk the riverbanks through the forest, it gives you a, it's such an amazing feeling. Just, you're just in awe of its beauty and its power within the first 10 minutes of my first boat ride going up the Cuiaba River, I saw my first jaguar and I was just fell in love. A wildlife biologist and founder of the Jaguar Identification Project, Abby Martin has studied jaguar populations in the Porto Jafre area of Mato Grosso for more than 10 years. She initially visited the area as a tourist and contracted Pantanal fever, a love of this land from which she has never recovered. Scientists describe the Amazon jungle as the lungs of our planet. Abby sees the Pantanal as its beating heart. Like the beating freshwater heart. And it's a huge refuge for all kinds of animals. It's like a big nursery. It's like the safe zone. And what's happening all around Pantanal is affecting it. Human activities such as habitat destruction, overfishing, and climate change have had a significant negative impact on the region's ecosystem and wildlife. But the Pantanal is naturally well equipped to fend off some human intrusions. So it has this seasonal flooding where six months out of the year it's completely dry and then the other six months it's completely wet. So keeping people out by its natural flooding and drying, it acts like a, a wildlife refuge for a bunch of endangered species. To protect this ecosystem, Abby decided to focus on the cats. The Jaguar ID project relies on ecotourism and citizen science, where visitors can pick up identification booklets to learn about individual jaguars they see, and even contribute to a comprehensive database of jaguar demographics by sending in their photos and observations. People in the region that come down here travel halfway across the world to come see a jaguar and they go on the river and they see a jaguar and they start to hear people talk about, oh, who's this? And then they can open up a book and learn about that individual. And we've been keeping a database, a cohesive database on demographics of jaguars. So number of males, number of females, number of cubs, how many cubs survived, number of sightings per individual, number of sightings of new individuals. So we have some really unique data that wouldn't be able to be collected through camera trapping or radio calling. Oh, so we, we got a new, a new jaguar. Yep, in station 12 of uh, Puva Land. The Jaguar ID Project's extensive database on jaguar demographics has revealed previously unknown insights into their social interactions. We are learning things about jaguars that we didn't know before. Jaguars are solitary predators, but when you come here in Porto Joffre and even other regions of Pantanal, you start to realize that these jaguars are much more social, more tolerable of each other. So we are documenting all this information about jaguars that will hopefully bring value not only to the species, but to the location where they exist. That approach extends well outside the protected parks on the Cuyabub River. Jaguars are keystone species and jaguars are umbrella species. That means that if you protect the jaguar, we protect all the other species, the monkeys, the birds, and all the species who are part of the ecosystem where the jaguar live. Paul Rad is a veterinarian and researcher working on his master's at Sao Paulo State University. 
His work in the northern Pantanal, near the beginning of the Transpantanera Highway, aims to mitigate human-wildlife conflict and promote responsible ecotourism. So the main solutions nowadays to protect the, the jaguars, one of them is tourism. Tourism is a big solution because you're bringing a new economy to the Pantanal, an economy where wildlife has a value. And the other solution is finding a way that cattle ranchers and jaguars can find a balance and can live together. And it is possible, we have many studies that show that you can live together with the jaguar. So we just installed this camera trap because there's a dead animal here. It was a prey of maybe a jaguar or a puma, so we want to make sure which individual it is. Rad uses so science and technology traps. to achieve those goals. With 95% of the Pantanal privately owned, he has worked to establish a wildlife corridor covering more than 230 kilometers, about 150 miles. Camera traps document jaguar behavior and movement patterns. The camera traps are very useful because we can put them in certain places where we know that the jaguar will pass, or if we see a prey of a jaguar, that we know that the jaguar will come back and eat. And there, we can see the behavior of the jaguar without the presence of the humans. Fecal sample analysis gives Paul and Abby a DNA database. So here we have some fecal material of jaguars. These are fecal samples. We can see the DNA. And with that DNA, we can know the proportion of the prey that the jaguars are eating in this region, so the diet of the jaguar. Knowing which cats preyed on what animals, both wild and domestic, protects cats from random killings and gives ranchers a way to recover costs when jaguars kill cattle. I think we can prove that consolidating these two activities works, livestock and tourism. Joao Campo grew up here. His family has owned the Pusada Pioval cattle ranch and guest house for decades. Where they once eliminated the cats as cattle killers, they now see the value jaguars bring to the area. Now, photo safaris drive past cattle and cowboys. Tourists pay for a chance to see a variety of wildlife, and part of that fee goes to reimburse ranchers for any depredation that occurs. We are hopeful. We want to build a strong partnership so that we can better understand the behavior of jaguars. We also work with cattle here and want to bring those two things together, livestock and wildlife. Income from ecotourism outpaces profits from cattle ranching by two-thirds. Oh Communities in these areas are seeing the value in preserving jaguars. So we're, when we're out there, we're counting the number of boats and the number of people. And it's roughly, you can say, around $500 to $1,000 a day to come down here to see one of these jaguars. So any given sighting, you can have up to 100 people times that by a thousand dollars you know we're talking a lot of money a day so these these jaguars have a huge value to the local economy abby and paul will tell you that investing in the jaguar the largest cat in the americas is an investment in the future of this ecosystem i think my true love is for the pantanal because it's a ecosystem that not many people know about and I think the jaguar here is a really good way to bring value to the Pantanal and make people realize that this is a really unique ecosystem and it needs to be protected more. There's no reason of just doing money. I need to do something, I, do, I need to work for a cause. Something that I feel, if I leave this planet, I left something. I did something for, at least for a species, at least for a tree, you know? So now doing something for the jaguars makes me feel like my life here and my presence in this planet is worth it.
fostering an appreciation for jaguars and allowing them to fulfill their ecological role is vital in maintaining the delicate balance of this unique ecosystem. A refuge for both predators and prey, our planet's beating heart, the Pantanal.